there's a whole bunch of forces kind of colliding on the game business all at once right now. So you have digital distribution, you have free to play, those are probably some of the biggest, but you also have things like crowdsourced funding, we're adding a PC installed base versus a worth of smartphones every year right now. So there's massive growth. And you know, if you're an optimist, you say, hey, those are all computers we can subvert to make games on. You know, so we have more gamers than ever, that's a great thing. It's it's an unprecedented time of change. I mean things were kind of quiet and normal for a while, <laughs> but now now it's really hard to predict the future. EA has spent more than two billion dollars in, in the last few years buying game companies and uh, the market capitalization of the company is only four billion. So you can only spend so much money, you know, to transform yourself. Um, Activision is really doing no acquisitions. So they're they're hey, we're good at the old school thing and we're gonna keep doing it. I'm not sure either of those strategies work though. You know, the question is, is there even a place for huge publishers in the new world? If you look at the really exciting projects in the market right now, they're coming from crazy places from people you never heard of. You know, they're coming out of Sweden, you know, with Mojang and, uh, you know, this, this product Minecraft. They're coming out of Belarus with uh, World of Tanks. You know, that game is making supposedly $30 million a month. I mean, those are numbers that even a big publisher would love to have, but they don't. Yeah, these, you know, imported business models, new business models, new developers, and that's really what's changing the world right now. Z2 Live is probably the, the best example I'm on the board of this mobile game company, Z2 Live. Uh, they have three products out on, on iOS. Uh, their best known game is a game called Battle Nations. So free to play iOS game, very successful, always sits about number 20 or so on top grossing. Uh, this company was a handful of people two years ago. Now it's maybe 130 or so here in Seattle. Com profitable from day one, money in the bank, doing great. Um, but you know, they, they build themselves up organically, adding the kinds of people that they need to, to make this kind of business, you know. Like if you're a big existing publisher, it's like everything you know is wrong and all the people you have are wrong, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like twice as hard as, as a Z2 Live, like if you're going to pivot to become Z2 Live, first you have to like fire all the people who are wrong and then you have to hire all the people that are right. Z2 Lab can just hire the people who are right, you know. So it's almost like their life is easier going into this new world. And I think that's a problem that everybody in the old world faces. How do they how do they transition into the new world? Somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, have you read this book, Racing the Beam? Like racing the electron beam?" Uh, on the screen. And I said, no, I've never heard of that book. So I went up, got this book, read it, and it was all about the Atari 2600 and uh, what a primitive machine it was and how difficult it was to program. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe because I'm a programmer or crazy or something. It, to me, it was like an interesting challenge. Um, and there's actually a lot of tools, development tools out because there's a, a whole community of homebrew programmers to this day who make games for this machine. So there was, so I thought, well, maybe I can just write a little program just to see what it's like. And, you know, I was trying to think of what to do. And so I just drew a little Master Chief in paint and then I tried to make it show up on the screen. And once I had him on the screen, I was like, well, you know, maybe I can make him move around a little. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I can make him shoot. Well, maybe I can have an enemy that he could shoot. Um, and it just kind of went on like that. And I had a very primitive version of the game. Um, and I went to the Game Developers Conference uh, in March of that year, and I ran into some old school kind of game collectors, and and I said, oh, I've been playing around in the 2600, and they're like, oh, you got to make this game, you got to make it, like, you got to really do it, you got to go back and make the whole thing. And so I came back from there kind of energized, like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make the game. There's a lot of hard parts to working on that machine, but squeezing it all into 4,000 bytes was really hard. About two months before I was done, I was out of space. And so every time I wanted to add something, change something, fix a bug, I had to go rewrite a piece of code and make it smaller so I had enough space to put in the new thing. 
And once you've rewritten the same piece of code six or seven times, it gets pretty hard to make it smaller. But, uh, but it was really fun. And, and so for me, it was fun because it was nostalgic both for me. It reminded me of the early programming that I did. It reminded me of working on Halo back on Xbox. And, uh, and it was just something that, I don't know, it seemed like there was a good response when I showed it. Showed it. When I would show it to people, they would like the game and they would give me feedback on how to make it better. So it was, it was a really fun project uh, and, and pretty personal, I guess. You know, honestly, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Um, I, I, coming into building Microsoft's game business, I had been through several big battles. So I battled Lotus 1, 2, 3 when I was working on Excel. Lotus was bigger than all of Microsoft, so you gotta gotta remember we were underdogs there. Then then I went and worked on Word, where we were battling Word Perfect again. Word Perfect was the biggest word processor in the world, so we were underdogs. So I was kind of my whole career, I was used to being an underdog. Then I built our PC publishing business, and there were companies like EA and others that we were competing with. And so Xbox to me was another extension of just competing with a big company that. Uh, or, or a set of big companies that were bigger than us. So the most important thing, I think, is just to be really naive, not know, not know, not know what you're getting yourself into. Because if, if you really knew like how difficult and how hard it was going to be, you you wouldn't even do it. You you got to be naive and just go in and do your best every day and and hope that the best will happen. And uh, and it is really exciting to see. I mean, I I've been off Xbox since 2004, but the team there has gone on and, and made it. Uh, even more successful and I'm happy to see that, happy to be part of it.